Hey everyone, I think it's time to upgrade the way I uh, mount my server and my networking and my UPSs. I got six of you hanging over here vertically on the wall and then I got four of you over here. So to upgrade it, today we're going to go and populate this. Azon, what are you doing? Hi daddy. Oh god. So yeah, all jokes aside, this is a trip light 12U enclosed wall mount rack, extended depth, supposedly 33 inches. Um, I guess that's all the way from the front to the exact back where it mounts on the wall because the rails, it fits up to 26 inch rails and I got these things stretched. And the only thing I put in here right now is rails. Now normally, this co this is a $500 unit, and it even pivots away from the wall. I'll show you in a second, so it's real easy to access the back. Um, I got this brand new, still on the pallet, from some guy in Dover, Delaware. He's closing his business, and he bought this for a client and never used it, and he had to get rid of it. I paid $125 for it, brand new, no scratches, never touched, still on the pallet. So yeah. That's why I got this. So today we're going to be moving my 4U Super Micro 846 server. Uh, I have a a uh, Unify USG hiding underneath there, which is also going to go onto a shelf on the very top. A Unify 16 port PoE switch that's going in there. I have one of those comb pass-throughs for all the networking wire, and I have two. 2U APC UPS is over here. One drives this right here that my arm is laying on. It's the deep freeze. Just to make sure, in case we ever lose power, I don't lose a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars worth of food in here. The other one is completely for the networking and server. We're going to downsize this bracket. And that's the first thing we're going to do when we get to work today. It's downsizing this bracket from 4U to 2U, taking the one for the server off, and that's going in here. And then everything else is getting moved up, and that bracket and all this stuff is going bye-bye. So let's take a quick, deeper look at this case before we get to work. Okay, so here's the front of the unit. It is lockable. You can open it, and you have your 12U. And the front door is fully removable on it. The side panels are also removable with a latch inside here. See, comes right off. And we latch this. And one of the coolest things, because again, this is a 12U unit, but how are you going to get to the wires in the back? I have it unlatched right now, but you just pull it and swing. Now, this unit is rated for 250 pounds, and we're going to get pretty close to it, but again, the 4U that I have the two UPSs on, that's 200 pounds. That bracket's only rated for 75, and it's strong. All these units are underrated weight-wise, so the manufacturer can CYA themselves. Now, Triplight recommends a eight fasteners into the wall. Well, I love overkill. Everything's overkill. So I did 16. So these are lag bolts going through three quarter inches of Luan plywood and then a two by four behind them to help spread out the weight. You could probably put 500 pounds on this thing and it still wouldn't move anywhere. There are also punch outs on the bottom and the top of the fixed section and also inside here depending upon where you want to run your power and networking wires in and out. So that's it in a nutshell. Go ahead and close it. it up again and get this door actually off of here. It just lifts right off. So the way we're going to do it today, there's going to be a KVM console here and that's the only thing I can't install right now in this video because I'm still waiting for that to come in shipping but I want to get everything else moved over. So we should have one 2U UPS, 4U uh, server and then we're going to take up three more spots for networking and I should have two extra spots available on the top. Actually the shelf needs to come down one. So let's get started with the UPS first.
Okay, let's turn it on. There we go. Deep freeze just turned back on. And I'm sure it'll do its own self test here in a few seconds. But this keeps it a lot flush. There's a the self test. Passed. Woohoo! Good. Okay, so now this is all set up. I got the other UPS off to the side, and this will allow me to eventually push this up a lot closer and just get things a lot more flush. So, let me let my back recover from <laughs> lifting these freaking behemoths, and then we'll move on over to uh, getting the server and other stuff out of there. Okay, so now I turned the deep freeze sideways like this instead of like this, and I also moved the uh, wall plug from here. All the way up top here so this way i can take care of the extra slack and just run it inside this in between these two two by sixes and push it against the wall oh well almost against the wall so now it's almost flush and ups is nice as happy hanging down there and it's topping off right now yep so let's move onward So here's the rack as it stands, um, except for the KVM console, which I'm still waiting to come in the mail, which will be in by the end of this video. I'm sure it will be. Uh, plus, I also have two U of open space up here. I was originally going to mount both UPSs in here, but I kind of didn't want to go over the weight limit too much and try my luck. Plus, it's better. I want to keep all the computer and networking stuff in this rack and keep that one extra UPS that's just for the deep freeze down separate so that's why i did that so this is basically the setup we're going to have so now we need to open it up and do all the wiring <sighs> definitely a lot heavier now but as you can see it definitely still swivels perfectly fine it does sag a little bit on the hinges, but I think that's just the way it is because there probably is, see here, 100, they're probably close to 250 pounds in there, which is what the rating is for this. It's not pulling away from the wall at all. It's just, that's just the way it is with 250 pounds on it. So let's go ahead and start the wiring. Okay, so after about an hour's worth of playing with the wiring, I got it all taken care of. At least I think I do. So we have the main power for the UPS coming on in few power wires shooting on back to the uh, Unify USG right on over here. This is my whole network bundle running through to the comb. This is the single networking wire coming on back to the server itself. And there's more than enough slack so this way the server can go forward and it won't bind at all. Same deal with right here. 
I have my um, USB wire and my power wire for my server, which run on down to the UPS. The uh, USB is for monitoring, and of course power is power. And again, I have a little bit of slack here tied together. There shouldn't be too much interference over the USB line because it's only transferring a little bit of data. So I shouldn't have too much of a problem if it wrapped next to the power wire. And since they don't make a um, cable management sled for the SC846, this should work fairly well. So let's go around to the front. And there it is all wired up. Yep. So the only thing we have to do now is uh, turn it on. Okay, so the only thing we have to do now is turn it on. There goes the server turning on, the switch turning on. Yep, there goes the USG turning on. Nice little cooling pod. There we go, there goes the fans running. There goes the UPS going through self-test mode. So now the only thing we need to do, now this is all taken care of, is install the um, KVM console, which should be in right about now. Yeah, that worked. Let's try that again. Jeez, it worked again. Let's try it one more time and see if it goes directly right into the rack. And it's in. Check it out. Comes on out. Locks in. Opens right on up. And we'll auto turn on. Only question is, okay, unrated is showing up information right here. So yeah, we are good now. So, although I don't think, okay, good. I still have, I'm not typing my password in right now, but works out beautifully. Automatically turns off. It does have speakers if you wanted to connect it. Uh, this is some no name brand I got for $125, brand new off of eBay. So I'm not really gonna put a link for this KVM unit on the description below because it, this is going to be a one-off so you might want to find a better one it's only a thousand twenty four by 768 screen as you can tell by just a hey, clock looking at the screen itself and how big the characters are you can tell it it's not a high def screen but it's a kvm console you're not going to watch a movie on it you're just going to be working on your server and doing administration stuff so let me put the front back on and I did have to modify it just a little bit. I had to cut out here, here, and here because everything's so far forward so it would actually fit in here. These handles for the 4U would hit and the handle for this would hit. So yeah, I had to do a slight modification to it, but it works perfectly fine. There's one. There's two. There we go, and it's happy. Let me show you the back wiring one more time real quick. Okay, maybe it doesn't look quite as clean as it did before, but I actually have my bundle, and oh my god, where are they? Velcro zip ties that you can reuse. So 21st century. Why was I using zip ties still from the 20th century? I'm linking these. They're cheap down in the description below. Makes messing with these wires so much easier. So with the KVM... Because this one uses PS2 connectors, the old style PS2 connectors for keyboard and mouse and VGA. I had to do some interesting wiring so this way it would be able to have the server come forward without snagging and pulling out wires. But it works perfectly fine. And yeah, this one, the uh, VGA cable won't quite fit in the bundle. But if I leave it loose out like this, it just makes it. So it works. It probably could get cleaner, and I'll probably keep playing with it as time goes on. But, yes, it works. <laughs> so now that I got it fully installed, let's check the wife approval factor. It's one test I haven't done yet. Hey, honey, come on over here. Check out my new rack. This new rack, right? That's what you mean. Not exactly, no. Oh, crap. <laughs> I hope that was the last take. So do I. <laughs> so that's the build. That's basically what I ended up doing. I switched on over from the two bottom kind of messy style all to a nice rack. Now granted, 
this rack is massive overkill. And I wasn't going to pay $500 for this rack either. I got it for $125. If I only had $125, I would have went with a standard open rack and figure out some room to put it on the floor and everything. But since I got this so cheap, yeah, overkill is the name of the game. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. Comments down below. I will try to respond to you. And share the video wherever you can. Thank you very much.